All right, monolithic and modular blockchains. Monolithic blockchains are the OG blockchains that we know and mostly love, like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then we've got modular blockchains like Arbitrum and Optimism. These have blockchain designs that allow for scalability. Now, in order to understand the differences between a monolithic and a and modular blockchains, you actually need to understand the core functions of all blockchains, specifically execution, consensus, data availability, and settlement. So in this video, we'll go through each of these functions, and then we'll look at the comparisons between the monolithic blockchain and the modular blockchain. Specifically, we'll look at Arbitrum layer two. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nassim, and I'm here to help you better understand blockchain technology. All right, monolithic and modular blockchains. So like we just mentioned, the components of the blockchain are the execution, consensus, data availability, and settlement. Now in a monolithic blockchain, the main blockchain actually handles all of these functions. So the nodes of the blockchain will do the execution, the consensus, the data availability, and the settlement. Now modular blockchains are a little different in that they've broken up these functions, so execution, consensus, data availability, and settlement, into sort of different layers, right? Now, not all of these are necessarily separated. So if we look at Arbitrum, for example, they have the Arbitrum layer two. Now the layer two handles the execution of a transaction, but then it still relies on the layer one, so the Ethereum mainnet for consensus, data availability, and settlement. So different modular, modular blockchains will have different designs and be built differently. So some of them might specialize in execution on a different layer, but all of these three on the same layer. Some of them might like put execution and consensus on one layer and so on and so forth. All right, so let's compare some features. So monolithic blockchains are limited scalability due to on-chain processing. Now, because every single node in the blockchain has to do all of these functions, it's inherently slow and not scalable. I don't know if you guys have tried to transact on Ethereum mainnet during a bull market. It's an absolute disaster. Then modular blockchains are high scalability due to parallel execution layers. Now, the whole point of modular blockchains is they've created separate layers for different functions so that these different layers can be more efficient at handling the transaction or handling their component of the job. Then we've got security. So monolithic blockchains are strong but rigid. So every node handles every transaction and does all of the functions. So it's got a strong security. Then modular blockchains have got high security with customizable components. So Modular blockchains are pretty much breaking up these core functions and handling them in separate places, which adds complica complications. But if each of these functions are handled in a secure way, then the entire modular blockchain is secure. Then cost efficiency, um, monolithic blockchains are expensive for high transaction loads with modular blockchains being cheaper by offloading execution or other layers. That's similar to what we described in scalability. Since every single node has to handle all of the functions in a monolithic blockchain, that requires a lot of processing power. And as such, it's going to be highly expensive. The modular blockchains are cheaper because they have specialized layers to handle that job. So they can do it more efficiently. And the end result is cheaper transactions for us, the end users. All right, so some examples of monolithic blockchains include Bitcoin, Solana, and the Ethereum mainnet. And modular blockchains include Ethereum plus Arbitrum, so Ethereum and its layer twos, Celestia, and Optimism. All right, let's look at a monolithic blockchain with an example. So let's say Kakashi wants to send Itachi one Ether, right? Now, let's look at what the function of the execution layer will be. This layer is responsible for processing all transac transactions and executing smart contracts. Every node processes every transaction. All right, so what does it mean to execute a transaction? So the node will have to check that Kakashi does in fact have the one ether to send, and they'll have to verify that the private key he gave in does in fact match the public account of that private key, right? So he has to be the owner of the account. And then if that's agreed, then it'll update to say that it touches got one more ETH 
and Kakashi has got one less ETH. So that would be the entire process of sort of executing a transaction. Now, on a monolithic blockchain, every single node in the network has to do this, which is very computationally expensive. And then we've got consensus. The consensus layer makes sure, makes sure everyone in the blockchain agrees on which transactions are valid and in what order they happened. So consensus is just this process by which all of the nodes in the network agree that the transactions are valid, we're happy with this next block being added to the blockchain, and we're all going to do it at the same time, right? So just everyone agreeing on what the next step is. Then we've got data availability. So this layer ensures that all data associated with transactions and blocks is stored and accessible to the network, right? So this just makes sure that all of the information of the transactions of the block is there so that anyone can go back and question any transaction and then the proof of that transaction along with all of the necessary information is in fact in the node, in the block. Um, this happens automatically with all monolithic blockchains. All right, then we've got settlement. Now, the settlement layer finalizes and records transactions on the Ethereum blockchain, all right? So settlement is just this process by which new blocks are added to the existing block, right? So we're interested in this block, and it is consider considered settled once blocks have been added after. When the blocks have been added after up to a certain number of blocks, then it's considered final and settled because you can't go back and undo that, right? You can't have like a fork that becomes the main chain, right? So if like six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks have been added after, then that blockchain is considered true and it extends from there. All right, so what is the problem with monolithic blockchains? We're going to do this in comparison to Arbitrum, and it is every node has to process every transaction. So this execution layer is the bottleneck of, let's say, the Ethereum mainnet. It requires so much computing power that it just becomes too expensive to handle any transactions. The saving grace, the Arbitrum layer too. So let's look how this functions. So let's say Kakashi wants to send one arm to Itachi. The execution layer is responsible for processing the transactions and executing smart contracts, same as layer one, but only the layer two nodes process transactions. Now, what Arbitrum has done is they've created their layer two and they've got their designated validators there, right? So those nodes on the layer two will process the transactions, but they have a few nodes that are doing this and it's quite centralized actually, um, but because of that, it goes super, Way, way quicker and it doesn't require that much computing power. So you're not having every single Ethereum node validating all these transactions. What happens here is they will send proof of the execution to the mainnet and then the proof will just be checked by the Ethereum mainnet uh, nodes. So we can actually just skip over the consensus data availability and settlement because all of these functions is actually the same as the monolithic Ethereum layer one, right? The mainnet. Only the execution was executed on a different layer. Now, I don't know if you guys are quite familiar with whatever the fees are, but Arbitrum is like 99% cheaper to transact with than the Ethereum mainnet. So just by offloading this execution layer onto a different layer, the fees have reduced tenfold. Now, another important thing to understand here is that different modular blockchains can be built differently, right? So in this example of Arbitrum, specifically the execution layer was done on another layer or the execution function was done on another layer. But different mod, um, blockchains for whatever their function is can construct their blockchains differently, right? Maybe they combine data availability and consensus onto one layer and then settlement somewhere else. Um, so however they build it up, whatever their function is, can be done. All right, guys, and that's it for the comparison of monolithic and modular blockchains. I hope by understanding these different four core functions of a blockchain, you can actually understand blockchains better in general and then understand the infrastructure that different modular blockchains have and how that is better for whatever their function is. If you guys like the video, definitely subscribe to the channel and then I'll catch you on the next video.